We, there was quite a bit of discussion recently about uh, memorials and uh, people who shouldn't be exhibited in public, the slave traders from the past and so on. And of course there's a movement to have a, uh, a memorial to some famous Jersey women. You know, there must be some people out there who want a memorial. So they took on Bridget George de Carteret, he was out of... But I keep a statue or a head, head of a dignified person. He was a great person in my kitchen cupboard, look. That's Emil Collins' head. Wow, that's a copy of his head, isn't it? It's a sculpture of his head. It's uh, a plaster cast of the one that's now in the town hall, which we had to find the money for, but he was, he died aged 98. Very interesting guy was Emil. But he now lives, he's a bit like Mr. Bentink, isn't he? The one, I think he's in Cambridge. They've got his real head, but they keep him covered up because he's gone a bit gruesome, because that's his real head. Not on a Cromwell's head. That was dug up and uh, put on a spike, I think, Oliver Cromwell. When the Royalists came back, fun enough, the Royalists came back in 1660, to a large extent because George de Carteret, the slave trader from Jersey, was working a pirate scheme for a for the for the for the Royalists out of this island here. Over there, from over there, like just out of that castle which you can just see over there, hidden behind all the all that stuff. That's where he was. He ran a fleet of pirates until 1651, until General Blake, General at Sea, came in for Cromwell's and turfed him out. De Carteret, strangely enough, wasn't executed as a traitor. He was, uh, he walked out, he was able to survive, and he became very, very rich. He was a very money-conscious person. And of course the king, as he became Charles II and James, his brother, he didn't get on so well with James, but they owed him a lot of money, so uh, that was George de Carteret. Poor Emil here didn't, he did very well. He had a little house and a family, but he was a, a lifelong left-winger, campaigner, trade unionists. He never left Jersey except for one day. He went to Guernsey for one day. He didn't like it very much. Never went out again. He was going to leave during the occupation, but when they came, when he went down to catch the boat, his family couldn't go. So he said, well, I, I'm only going if my family can go. So he didn't go. So he stayed here during the occupation. And he's like uh, lots of people of that era, very modest lives they lived, simple sorts of lives. But where are they now? Where are these people? Where are the people like this? Don't want to shout about anything. Don't want to shout about how wonderful they are. They don't want to show their wealth. They haven't got wealth. But today you have to have everything. You have to have all the possessions and the communications as we know my pet hate egov we tried to set up emil with a computer because he had a when he was in the care home and he, he was very active on bbc radio jersey on the phone-ins and they closed it down so he he lost it his purpose in life i'm sorry to say was very diminished because he couldn't get he enjoyed going on the radio and he used to prepare what he had to say, and it was a big event for him. And they shut it down, and, and, uh, and several other people were much disadvantaged because they couldn't express their views. So we tried to set him up with a computer. Um, but he, he had a fall, and he never recovered from that. He was 98, so he didn't quite make the ton. But uh, he was of a class of person. Left wing, as I say, progressive thinking. Where are they coming from now? We, uh, what's happened? Why is it? Why is it we are all so selfish? But uh, he wasn't. He was. Uh, he used to come down to my office and he'd be working up the road. He'd love to come down. Oh, he'd written to Mrs. Thatcher and he'd done all these things and he had a reply. Of course, they didn't take any notice of what he said. Of course, they didn't. That's how it is. Government. They're having a government in Guernsey and I've just recorded a little interview over there. 
but we should be having a big election in two years time it'll be the same old stuff all over again and there's a little interview a scrap of it and we did a lot of interviews with Emil most of it we've lost unfortunately we can't get it out of the bloody computer but Emil he had some interesting thoughts about things and uh, he lived in St Helier all his life, and he used to walk up to St John. I'm, I was amazed. Well, how did you get to St John? Oh, we used to walk up to St John. To, they had friends with a farm up at, the, up at St John. That was it, walk up there. Nothing unusual in that for them. Obviously, you've got to be fit enough to be able to do it. I don't know. I'm so, so disillusioned by the political process for people like him, like my parents and like me, my lifetime, all the hopes we've had of a political system which will deliver improvement, improvement, improvement. No, it's not happening. It's not happening. There are things that are getting better, of course, but life is becoming very, very stressful just to exist and everybody wants to... So I say have the latest, but it's keeping up to date with the information. We know everything that goes on in the world. We can tell everything. We have to worry about everything that goes on in the world. Emil didn't have to worry about everything. He wasn't he wasn't caring. He didn't need to know. And we we don't really need to know about lots of things that happen. And lots of horrible things that do happen shouldn't happen. Because of people like Emil down at the base level are keeping an eye on things at local level so that it doesn't get out of control at international level. But I don't know, it's not as simple as that. That was the dream, that was the old socialist dream. So there he is, I keep Emil in the cupboard. But I don't know where they're producing Emil's anymore. I don't know.